Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day. Uh, today, the presentation of the potential, uh, the paper titled Potential Legal Risk of the Bomb Threat and Education Process, a case study on a private hospital in Malaysia. My, names, my name is Reza Khazir bin Kaman together with Rabiha Maksum from Faculty of Science and Technology, University of Islam Islamnesia, Nilai. There are five sections for this presentation. First, introduction. Second, literature review. Third is methodology, fourth result discussion, and the fifth is conclusion. And uh, before we go further, this is the definition of private hospital under Private Healthcare Facilities and Services Act 1998. Uh, this act has defined a private hospital as any facility other than government hospital or institution, which is used or meant to be utilized for the reception, accommodation, treatment, and care of those who need medical or dental treatment that needs hospitalization. And uh, what you can see here, from 2018, uh, 2017 until 2021, there is a slight increase of the number for private, uh, licensed private hospital and the uh, bed that can accommodate the hospital. And uh, the bomb threat incident occurred at KPJ Sramban Special Hospital on 27 November 2018 with 346 evictees. And the resolution after the incident uh, is a uh, land opportunity for evacuation process, standard operating procedure, MOU between private and government hospital, and also the capability of hospital in receiving ventilators and critical cases. This is the chronological order of the bomb threat incident from start and from the end of the evacuation, uh, of the evacuation process. Uh, this uh, chronological order obtained from the report and has been con converted to the chart flow in order to understand and analyze the situation thoroughly. And uh, this is the definition of the legal risk from the Mohit or the Ripley and the standardized and the, from the ISO 31022 guideline to manage legal risk uh, has this described legal risk as a, as a risk that can be read from contractual matter, regulatory and contractual right plus legal obligation. And uh, the source of the Legal risk can uh, originate from the non contractual obligation and tortious duty. And uh, the organization for the non contractual obligation, the organization behavior and decision making result in illegal behavior of, or uh, failure in non legislative duty of care or civil duty to the parties. And also, it can be the, and this uh, organization behavior also can include tortious duty. And for the legal risk hospital, a study has been conducted in Korea in 2017 by Park et al. And the recommendation is identifying and minimizing medical malpractice in hospital, creating incident response plan, creating an incident report framework, and taking enforcement measure. However, the study is limited to legal risk in the normal operation of the hospital, and the study did not consider legal risk in the crisis situation such as bomb threat and evacuation process. On ISO 31022, uh, to identify legal risk, first can use two of techniques and second the source of information of the legal risk. And for the techniques to identify legal risk, first uh, the document analysis introduced by Bowen and Doug Dalgish Kali and Mark Mahon is, has introduced the re-approach where R for ready the material document, E for the extract the data, A analyze the, the data, and for distill the findings. And this uh, study has applied the read uh, approach in a case studies method where the research has been conducted in Pakistan and Nigeria to increase theoretical and empirical understanding of health policy issues. And also uh, the usage of LRIM, Legal Risk Identification Metric, where you can see here the Legal Risk Apology, there are six categories from category one until six. And uh, this LRIM also can involve the activities of agent, employees, contractor, individual who work for, uh, who work for or with the company. This is the table one. Next, we go for the source of information of legal risk. And uh, legal risk falls under the application of specific law, case uh, case law, and common law. And several areas can be used, uh, such as tort law and evidence law. And for the legal risk from the tort law, it can cover occupation liability, medical confidentiality, medical negligence, and employer's liability. 
And from failure to provide a safe escape route uh, during emergency situation, this is occupancy liability under tort law, where the case of the allowed insurer can be referred uh, for the definition of uh, premise. What is premise? Premise is uh, all type of structure, spaces, including vehicle used to transport people, such tractor. And all type of structure refer to structural features such as scaffolding, ladder, wall, pallet, and grandstand. And uh, liability in uh, failure to provide safe escape route has been decided in the case of Versi Inai Pulau Pinang. And second, the danger of cause, danger or damage caused by the unusual danger of risk. And uh, actually, the legally authorized, authorized entrance is the person who enter a place under legal authorities such as police officer, firefighters, military leader or health inspector. And the uh, referred case for the Shamsuddin versus uh, Choh Teh, yep, Choh Teh, and another in 1969, this is a case for the liability towards legally authorized entrance. And uh, the accused liability claim for the criminal act of third party, the refers case can be seen in the case of Anaja versus the Cumberland Hotel in 2019. In this case, uh, the lawsuit was rejected by the court because the hotel did not fail, did not fail to fulfill its duty of care to the plaintiff. Next, still under occupier's liability, the failure of the employee to provide a sufficiently safe system of work to the employee. Uh, this is uh, the case of Kanagawasati versus uh, Narsingham. And uh, the failure of the defendant employee to provide a sufficiently safe system to work to the employee has initiated legal risk. And as the employee sustained injury during work because of the dangerous circumstances, uh, the court found defendant employer was responsible. Next is the sources. Next is the sources of uh, legal risk from medical confidentiality and negligence. And the breach of uh, medical confidentiality, uh, the referred case from Dr. Tan Haba versus Dr. Wong Fu Myung. And uh, next is the failure to attend and uh, to attend to and treat a non patient in an emergency situation. This can be seen in the case of the loan uh, versus Wood in 1996. For the British, uh, for the British of duty of care, uh, the case Abdul Aziz bin Awang uh, versus Tenaga National uh, can be referred. Uh. Okay, uh, for the case of the Abdul Aziz Awang, the defendant release of water from the dam in Canberra Highland has caused excessive damage to the plaintiff residents and the death of four people. The court held that the defendant committed negligence by failing to install real-time water level measurement equipment at the decision to release water from the dam was not supported by the sufficient justification. Failure to gather evidence as per evidence collection method also can be the source of the legal risk. And uh, Muhammad 2019 stated that the definition of computer evidence has three diff different terms, which are computer printout, computer output, and computer evidence. And the referred case is from the case of Ahmad Najib and the PP versus On Cheng Hyong for the failure to gather evidence as per evidence collection method. Next is the definition of the bond trap from the sub Newman and the Wabo. And uh, for planning for the crisis, uh, from the KPJ report has stated that they have the DEMP, which has been developed by the KPJ hospital for the bomb threat incident. And also the Emergency Management Services, MSA, has produced guideline title hospital incident command system, HICS, where the HICS is an incident management system that based on the ICS incident common system, which can be used to improve emergency management planning, response, recovery capabilities for the both scheduled and expected incident. And HICS uh, adhere to the same concept of ICS and has been widely used in the United States. And uh, for methodology, the data collection, the study use uh, statistical data and three types of document with the uh, KPJ, the KPJ Specialist Remah Hospital Incident Report as uh, the report in the Future of Healthcare Sustainability Report 2018, the IPG Incident Planning Guide, and also relevant cases regarding law of thought and law of evidence from Malaysian, Australian, and English cases were analyzed to the situation in the KPJ Incident Report and HICS IPG. 
And this is how the data analysis being conducted. This is started by conducting content analysis on the incident report and uh, the narrative of the incident is analyzed and developed into the flow chart as presented in figure one just now, the flow chart. And then to identify the potential legal risk, the chronological order of the incident is compared against HICS and the relevant case law. The relevant case law is discussed in the literature review section and the aim is to explore similar situation and action between the incidents and the HICS guideline and the case law. Finally, based on the information obtained from these three sources, the potential legal risk are identified and the potential legal risk are presented in the table two. Okay, this is uh, table two design discussion and we can see here for the potential legal risk uh, number one for the potential uh, there are eight potential legal risks actually let me explain the result and discussion for potential legal risk number one for the potential legal risk number one by referring to the case of pp versus on cheng hon and aman najib if the CCTV or telephone conversation recording is not being supported by certificate of operation or oral evidence of the person in charge, this recording may not be admissible in trial. And second, uh, for the potential legal risk number two, referring to the case of Kanaga Basati versus Nasingam, fellow of the, for the, of the hospital to provide sufficient training, equipment and medical coverage to ERT can pose legal risk. The ERT may be injured or harmed during the bomb threat and the evacuation. For the potential legal risk number three, the medical staff cannot deny the treatment to non-patient of the hospital. If they fail to treat the injured person accordingly, the injured party can sue the hospital as the case of loans. And uh, also for the potential legal risk number four, the line of authority must be clearly stated between the government authority and private hospital management by referring to the case of the Abdul Aziz bin Awang. The evacuation decision making can be supported by the installation a fire alarm panel at the hospital. The fire alarm panel can provide information of the location of fire in the case of the bomb explosion has occurred. Hence, the decision of safe escape route can be made by excluding the bomb explosion location from safety escape route. If the bomb did not explode yet, the fire alarm panel can be used to prevent the usage of elevator to reduce possibility harms to evacuees if the explosion occurred. Uh, Next, uh, we, move, we move to potential legal risk number five. The failure to provide safe escape route will cause legal risk as per case of Sri Inai, Pulau Pinang versus uh, Yong Jit Sui, 2003. For the potential uh, legal risk number six, the failure to provide sufficient security measure can establish legal risk to the hospital as per case of Al Najaf and other versus the Cumberland Hotel London 2019. And uh, <clears throat> for the potential uh, legal risk number six, we can see that uh, the installation of the CCTV uh, is very important because uh, it can ensure the, uh, the area is well guard and also the usage of the access card. And next, we move to the potential uh, legal risk number seven. The patient medical record is one of the most important aspects in the patient transfer process. Leak of the medical information can inflict legal risk to the hospital by referring to the case of the Dr. Tan Ahba. With respect to the medical confidentiality, can be used as the input in the developing evacuation process. SOP. And uh, finally, for the potential uh, legal risk uh, number eight, the hospital management must explain to the government authorities about the danger of the uh, caused by the chemical storage from the piping, gas and high voltage cable and because uh, if the hospital fails to notify them, it will impose legal risk to the hospital and the legal risk has been decided by the court in the case of Shamsuddin. And uh, as a conclusion, the study demonstrated that it is not sufficient to identify only the legal risk component for the bomb threat incident and evacuation process in the hospital setting. In managing a crisis situation such as bomb threat incident evacuation process, the hospital management need to identify legal risks and analyze relevant legal cases in order to determine liabilities of the parties involved. Knowledge on legal risks as well as relevant legal cases, available inputs in developing evacuation command through land of, uh, land of authority, coordinating SOP and MOU for patient transfer between government and private sector during crisis situation. And uh, that's all for the presentation today and uh, the reference can be referred at the back of the slide. Thank you.